what is thinking? Okay. Uh, I def- I'll define thinking now, and I, this is just something I typed to my dad yesterday, as the consecutive execution of linked programs. Okay. Now let's see what we think about that. If you think about thinking and answer this question from your internal perspective, um, that probably won't be the answer. Um, You'll come up with an answer that we've all come up with when we have uh, tried to articulate or define this process of me thinking, right? Often maybe we'll use synonyms, imagining, uh, wondering, um, trying to answer a question, we'll say. Um, okay, but what if we try to answer the question from an external perspective? Put aside you, a brain, you're the brain's experience of you, the brain. Let's put aside your experience of the mind, your experience of thinking. Um, Let's have the humility to do that, to know that the brain, thinking about the brain, and just the brain experiencing the brain might not actually be an indication of what's happening in the brain. Um, of course, and why would it be? Now, what could be an indication of what's happening in the brain is research um, from an external perspective, using tools, uh, doctors looking at a brain. And when you look at this three-pound thing, you well, you can't see it. It's just, it's just a blob, um, but it, it's a whole bunch of billions and billions of neurons and trillions of glial cells, um, all sort of meshed together and interacting. And what we know from looking at what we you know from you know what's easier to see when you look at like a snail brain or something is it's like okay, sensory input triggers this neuron, which either excites or inhibits this neuron which either excites or inhibits these neurons which you know and then and then and then and then ultimately it's a motor neuron that is either excited or inhibited um so the brain is that it's input output not immediately always right so they can be there's still inputs from when i was a kid sort of circling around or that defined certain architecture so that defined who gets inhibited and who gets excited um okay so if we define thinking as based on our understanding that the brain is a network of neurons, we define thinking as the proceeding of activity through these neurons. Um, And it's just the execution of the program. So the neuron gets stimulated. So maybe it's excited, it fires, fires its signal to this neuron, fires its signal to this neuron. And that signal, it's not a message in and of itself. The message is more of an emergent label emergent event, emergent layer, um, and uh, but it triggers this just binary yes or no, um, and then there are other things that are triggering that, and then anyway, it's just dominoes. That's why I often talk about just dominoes hitting each other. Okay, so then if we define thinking as the consecutive execution of linked programs, and in this case, I'm talking about the neuronal programs being so really just linked neurons. But then you can also talk about it in a higher sense of, okay, we're not looking at the bio, the neuronal level, but we're looking at the network level. And so if we describe this assortment of neurons as being this program, then when this network gets triggered, and it triggers its neighbor, or it triggers the next guy down the line, That is the consecutive execution of these programs. Okay. I think that is huge if we think about thinking like that, as it obviously is if you just think about it sort of simply and from an exterior perspective. Um, Then what would be a bias or a fallacy uh, or a heuristic and so on? 
Well, you wouldn't be able to like look at the brain and go, oh, that's a fallacy, that's a heuristic, just by looking at the brain. You could maybe find a heuristic in the brain. But first, you have to go, oh, that network, that program that ran, that output, was that close to reality or not? Was that close to being something that was reasonable or not? Oh, it wasn't? And yet that program ran? Ah, so that's what we call a systematic error in the mind. That's a program that the mind has. It's one of the consecutive, one of the programs, then the linked programs that gets executed. Um, but it's not super adaptive, which is, of course, why on this channel we avoid words like biases and fallacies. Because when we think about the brain as this like coding of these, the consecutive execution of linked programs, it becomes a little bit meaningless to talk about to use terms like biases and fallacies, those are more meaningful when we have this illusion of being this reasonable self. And then like we're influenced by these like, oh, no, this bias, this fallacy, these tricks or something like that. But instead, we look at it as these linked programs and we say, oh, some of these linked programs, though, don't yield a great result. Ah, OK, that. When it doesn't link it in because it's cut out the middle, for instance, um, the brain loves to take shortcuts so it, or whatever the, that logical fallacy is with the uh, excluded middle or whatever. The un... What is it? Fuck. Uh, I'm not great on my formal fallacies, admittedly, uh, which, which, is, which is not something I should be proud of. Um, the un... The middle... And even if I think of the name, I still actually don't really know what it is. So, hey, that's me. So I'll, I'm going to learn that. Uh, I'm going to learn that today. Um, and try to notice when I do that, maybe. But anyway, so, um, so there you go. So a bias or a fallacy, let's not use those words. Let's instead just look at all these different programs that are being triggered. Um... Let's look at these programs as, let's call them voices, all talking amongst themselves. As my previous video about uh, the judge myth, at the end, I started, you can just skip to the end, I started talking about this courtroom and the best way to imagine the mind is just a bunch of townspeople sort of yelling at each other. And so those are the different voices. They're not talking to a judge. There is no judge. They're just talking to each other. Some of these voices are better adapted to the situation that meaning yielding a more reliable or more uh, beneficial result than other ones. So anyway, so there we go. We've got a definition of thinking. We've got a short explanation of why we prefer to refer to biases, fallacies, heuristics, illusions, all that stuff as just maladaptive voices. Why we and then other thinking mechanisms that we don't necessarily label as being erroneous are just voices. Um, there you go. And then, well, honestly, with that definition of thinking, if you accept that, and tell me why you don't, uh, then that answers our questions about free will. It answers our questions about consciousness um, by telling us, oh, okay, that, that's not something demonstrated by, ex, you know, by the reality of the brain. But it is something, of course, these are things that we experience. We experience free will. And so on. But we have the humility to know that just because we experience it doesn't make it real. All right.